Well, good morning. It's great to be together worshiping at Grace Bible Church. Uh, we will continue our worship by opening our Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, some men will be making their ways down the aisles and put your hand up. They'll make sure you get one. When you have your Bibles, you can turn to Galatians chapter 1. In his letter to the churches of Galatia, the Apostle Paul was writing to counter false teachers who were undermining the doctrine of justification by faith in Christ alone. These false teachers spread the teaching that Gentiles must first become Jewish converts and submit to Mosaic law before they could become Christians. In Galatians, Paul defends justification by faith alone and warns about the consequences of abandoning the true gospel, the very gospel that we reflect on each Sunday when we take communion together by eating a piece of bread and drinking from a cup, which are visual reminders of Jesus' death on the cross. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 3, Paul can't help but opening his letter in praise to the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ for the glorious gospel. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age. And this is the good news of a rescue and peace with God because of Jesus' death in our place for our sins as a substitute. It's that very precious gospel that was in jeopardy in the Galatian churches. In verses 6 through 7, he writes, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Jesus Christ was being deserted by so-called believers for a distorted imposter gospel. And notice the way he says this in verse 6, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him. Desertion of the gospel is desertion of Jesus Christ. If you abandon what Jesus says, you abandon Jesus himself. Now turn to chapter 2, verse 16, and here Paul highlights the distortion that was occurring. Verse 16 reads, Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, since by the works of the law no flesh will be justified. How is man declared righteous before God? How is a man reckoned by God to have fulfilled all of God's righteous requirements? By faith in Christ. Or to say that differently, by actively believing Christ and his gospel, by entirely entrusting oneself to him, fully depending on and submitting oneself under Christ and his word. Justification does not come by fulfilling Mosaic law, becoming a Jew, or receiving circumcision. Man can never attain God's righteousness by what he does. Our only hope is in Christ alone, and that is good news, because man could never keep the law. For believers who place their trust in Jesus Christ, God declares us righteous. But the good news doesn't stop there. God doesn't just declare us righteous when we entrust ourselves to him, but he begins the process of actually making us righteous through our union with Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as we live by faith. Look a few verses down in chapter 2 to verse 20. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Believers are united with Christ in his death and in his life to such an extent that Paul can say, it's no longer him living, but Christ living in him. But on the other hand, it is still Paul living, but he does it by living a life of faith or continually entrusting himself to Christ, depending upon Christ who loved us and gave his life for us. For believer, for the believer here this morning, rejoice in the glorious gospel of Christ. Heed Paul's words that are found in Galatians 5.1. Keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. 
by, by adding on to the gospel something that we must do to establish our own righteousness. Does this mean that we don't obey Jesus' commands? Of course not. How could we entrust ourselves to the goodness of Christ and his words and not keep them? Paul's message to the Galatians does not preclude good works or obedience for those who have put their faith in Christ. To see that briefly, just listen as I read from Galatians chapter 5, verse 5. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith, working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? The result of our faith is love and devotion to Christ, which will show itself and result in a loving, obedient submission to his words. The Galatian problem wasn't that they put their faith in, faith in Christ, and then out of humble, loving to de- devotion to him, they sought to honor him by keeping Mosaic law. No. They had rejected Christ's words and were putting their trust in a rival means of righteousness. For genuine believers, true faith works itself out through love, which includes, chapter, in verse 5, obeying the truth. We obey out of, out of both love and duty because we've been justified and united in Christ and united with the Holy Spirit, but not in order to be justified. So believers, we know our only hope was found in Jesus Christ's, Jesus Christ's death on the cross where he bore the penalty of our sins. And by wholly entrusting and submitting ourselves to Christ, we found peace with God producing in us loving obedience to him that he himself made possible by giving us his Holy Spirit and uniting us to his son. That's a reason to rejoice this morning. Believer, are there areas of your life where you realize you've been seeking to establish your own righteousness? Maybe you've been distracted from the purity of the gospel. Or maybe there are areas where you have turned a deaf ear to Christ's words. Repent of all those things this morning. Seek the Lord's forgiveness. And if you are a follower of Christ, we invite you to participate with us in taking communion this morning as the plates are passed. But if you are not a follower of Christ, you haven't repented of your sin and put faith in Christ, uh, we would ask you to just please let the plates pass by you when they come around. But in the quietness of your own heart, I would beg you, ask the Lord to reveal the truthfulness of his words to you today as you sit and listen. And please come by after the service this morning to the door on my right where someone would love to sit and talk with you about what it means to put your faith in Christ Jesus for salvation. The men in the back, you may come forward and distribute the elements. Um, Believers, as your hearts are prepared, you may take communion on your own this morning.